so that it kind of hides it. Yeah. Sometimes, like, I thought this would totally hide it, but it actually just made it stand out. Yeah. still looks better than brass, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. But a lot of times I'll take – this one I did, like, multiple colors, and I painted red and white and blue all over it just to make it hide. And it, sometimes people are like, oh, I couldn't even tell it was there. Yeah. So you can hide it pretty well. That's what I was looking at before. Yeah. All right, I missed it. So how did you hide the, you paint the brass? I missed it. So I, you glue the brass insert into your blank. Yeah. And when I do the two-part epoxy, I'll just put a drop of the color that I want to kind of use to hide it into the two-part epoxy. And then it, when it hardens, it's just a blue instead of clear. Right. Yeah, works pretty well. Now for pen tubes, can you use epoxy on pen tubes and just... Sure. I, I started out using nail polish on pen tubes. And as soon as you put the epoxy on or the CA glue on it to glue it in, yeah. it smears the... Yeah, it, usually if it's uh, the wrong kind of paint, it'll get soft, and then it'll smear like that. So you have to kind of test the waters ahead of time to see if it's the right one. Okay. All right. We good? <laughs> well, it's probably me. I'm just probably standing crooked. <clears throat> Well, this will be kind of fun. You guys get a little quick lesson here on this. Uh... <sighs> All right. Good to go, Amy? Carefully slide this out of the way. Should be thick enough now that I'm not stirring it too much. Okay, so we good to go, Amy? Yeah, so. Hello, everyone on the camera. <laughs> um, so today I'm going to do a quick kind of an overview of how label cast. Now, what a label cast is, Amy, will you grab me a tube off that table back there? Yeah. thought I had everything. A label cast versus when we cast a block is we're making a tube and we're putting something around it, typically a label, um, and then we're going to cast that in clear resin. So it's a really simple process. However, it's something that most people struggle with like crazy when they're first starting it. Because things fail, that works. Yeah, that works. But essentially, um, the cool thing is you can print pictures. So if you wanted to do a picture of someone or a picture of a place or a company logo or whatever the case may be, you can do it and you're just wrapping the tube. Now, you can do it with anything. And what I'm going to show you is one of my favorite things is stocks. So this is an old stock certificate. You ever seen one of these? Pete, have you seen one of these? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know how I'll, far back. <laughs> so this is how stock used to be um, issued. This was Michigan Central Railroad Company. And what's cool about it is you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do. Now, this is going to be just kind of a brief overview to give you the idea, but there's endless possibilities with this. And let me tell you what I'm going to use first. I'm going to use a Sierra size template guide. And this will help me cut out what I'm going to use to wrap this. I'm going to use this little corner jig. And then I'm going to use a tube-in mold, which is right here. And what the tube-in mold does is it suspends my tube in the center of the mold so that resin can get all the way around it. So when, I, when it comes out, it's going to be pretty much ready to square and turn, which is really cool. Sorry, my plug bin must have moved it there it is the problem with having so many molds is you have a lot of different plugs so <laughs> we'll find them as we need them you know rich yep okay so let me show you what we're going to do here the beauty of these being clear versus if they were a solid color it would still work but i can take it and place it on whatever my printout is or if i printed labels a lot of people will print uh, on their printer they'll print labels for, you know, whatever, we the people or flags, and then they'll print them on adhesive back uh, labels. And that way they can just roll their tube onto it and it sticks. Works fine. I've never done it that way. It's just not something that I did and I, I don't know why. But what I'm going to do is place my template over, we're going to do this $1,000 bond little number here. So see how I can kind of center it, I can kind of see where I'm going. And what is cool 
is when I get it where I like it, I'm going to make sure everything looks lined up. I can just simply cut against the template. Oops, skipped it there. Hmm. Come on. And I don't want to let it move because, oops, pretty precise. But I should have a perfect little square here, assuming I got it all the way through. That is the same size as my template. And what that is also the same size is as my tube. So when I roll this, you can see it lines up almost perfectly. Just a tiny bit of overlap and just a tiny bit of overlap on the ends, which you want a little overlap. If you had it to where it was so close that it was right on the tube, it'd be pretty hard to get it lined up. Now, that's the template, so that makes it easy to cut out your thing. You can do this with anything. You could do it with pictures, cards, printouts, any other kind of paper, um, whatever you want. And then I'm going to roll this on here. So this, we call it a rolling jig. Different than the rolling jigs you grew up with, Rich. Okay, just so you know. A lot different, yeah. And what you can see here is, what's that? <laughs> so I put the, the piece in here and I put it in this corner. And then I can put my tube in there and I'm starting square on the edge. I know that my lines are going to match up because it's not going to be crooked. If you do it by eye, not that I've tried this a million times, it never comes out right, but you still do it anyway. Uh, so this jig just helps you roll it. Now you could, we sell these jigs, you can make one. All you need is that 90 degree corner. That's what's important. So I'm going to take my piece of paper here. And I'm going to use my secret adhesive, so don't tell anyone. I use Elmer's glue stick. Is that laughing? <laughs> and I use the purple that dries clear. And I've used this for like 10 plus years. And the reason I use the purple dry clear is I can see it's on here. See that? It's purple. I mean, I know I covered the whole thing. If it was clear, I wouldn't know. And then I stick it right in the corner and actually I use a lot of times I'll use the glue to hold it it's hard to do when you're trying to show I'm going to put that down in there now I can remove my glue ah this is going to be sticky on me <laughs> I've got my corner so I'm square and I'm just holding it. <laughs> no, actually, look at my look at my alignment. Right, that's pretty good. And the reason being is, I tried to get this cut when I cut this out. I tried to get it really on the same spots. And I'm, what I'm going to do here is just make sure my first piece is tucked under the second piece, and that way it lays right on top. So if you see, it looks pretty good. Now I like to take my glue and hit my seam, and then I use my finger to wipe off any excess. And a lot of times I'll push down on that seam for a minute and see how I kind of squeegeed it out of there. But see the purple line? I know I've got good adhesion there, or I've got a good glue line. And as long as this doesn't come up on me, once it dries, it'll be good in the resin. The biggest part of uh, label casting for beginners is it'll look good, they'll put it in the resin, and then their corners float away on them, right? You've probably seen this. The corners or the whole side will just float up in the resin. So by doing it this way, I've never had an issue, and I'm just using this razor to hold it flat. But see, it's already turning clear, the purple. But that, I know I've got a good seal there, and it's from what I use, the liquid diamonds, that glue doesn't react with it, so it doesn't soften in the resin which is a big thing. So you could do this with other glue. You could do it with CA or any other kind of glue, but you'd want to test it with your resin to see if your resin softens the glue. So we're going to let that sit just a sec. Chad, how would that work? How, would the, how does that glue work with the Illumilite? So good question. The question was, how does this glue work with Illumilite? I don't know the answer. So 
People do cast very successfully with alumilite and tube-in blanks like this. I never have. I've always used epoxy and I've always had great results, so I've never even tried. Now I know alumilite is more temperamental, so some glues will crystallize in the resin or they will um, not stick. So your, your piece will be in there and then after you take it out and you go to turn it, if you put any pressure on the blank, it'll separate from the, the paper or whatever your label is. So that's why I've never done it. I have great results with liquid diamonds and I think part of it is because it actually soaks into the material. So it'll soak into the paper, which is good and bad. It's good for adhesion because it keeps my, my piece really bonded well. I don't get those separations. However, it can change the color because if your paper is thin or light, it'll actually make it translucent and you might see all brass tube through it. So there again, I wouldn't want to do 50 of these without trying the first one first because I may need to paint my tube or use a different color tube or something. Um, but I want to make sure that it, it is good. Now this one, I've done this color before and I know this will be fine. So I didn't paint the tube. But if you look, see that little bit of extra paper on the end? You can see it's even all the way around. Mm -hmm. And could I have rolled that by hand without squaring it? Maybe. But every time I use this, it comes out good. If I don't use it, it's about 50-50. And I've done a lot of these, like thousands. So <laughs> practice doesn't always make perfect as far as that goes. Now, I always have a razor blade because what I like to do is take it on the edge here and basically just trim. So this edge is basically trimming nothing. Anyone know why? Because it was in the corner. It was where I started. So that edge was like perfectly aligned. This edge you're gonna see, and I just poke it through right on the tube. And again, this is just practice. And I just roll it. And you can see, that I get a perfect little ring, right? So it's like a perfect little ring and it's pretty even. So I know I was pretty straight because I mean, my paper lined up pretty much perfect. And then I have a nice clean edge. So you don't have to do that before you put it in the mold, but it sure helps because when your plug goes in there, you don't want it to lift the paper and let resin get under that end. Anything that you can do to stop any interference with it, definitely do. But that's a prepped tube. So if you guys want to look at that quick, we'll pass it around while I look for some plugs. I'm going to actually spray this real quick. That's all I want to do. With tube in, you're pouring clear. You don't want any contaminants. If you hose this thing down and put a ton of mold release in it, you can get little specks in your, in your clear, which doesn't look good. So, I mean, I barely sprayed it and Maybe it does something, maybe it doesn't, but you do want to use mold release. And then now I just need my plugs. So these molds, these are P-Town Subby molds. You put one plug in and you kind of just set it in place. And then I'll put the tube in and I'll put a second plug in. And I don't spray the tubes or the plugs ever because I want them to stick hard into the metal tube. If I sprayed them, they would be too easy to pop out. And if you get tube or resin in your tube when you're casting these, it's kind of a lost cause because drilling it out without damaging the tube is almost impossible if it's full of resin. So these tubes are kind of expendable. Um, you can see some of these are pretty weathered and worn and I'll replace them. But I mean, they're not expensive and it's worth having that good stick. You can see when I push it in, it doesn't come off. But if I had sprayed it with, with, it would just go in and out without even sticking. So this, for the sake of demonstration, we're going to go ahead and cast it. I'd probably let this sit at least a few hours to let that glue really, really dry. So we're definitely rushing it here. But um, if I have till tomorrow, I would let it sit overnight. So a lot of times I like to make these one day and not cast them for a day or two. But that gives you time to make a few. When I put these in, I always like the seam to be up, okay? So for the sake of a blank, if you're making it for someone else, it looks better to have your best part, your picture up, because that's gonna be the cleanest. However, for casting, I wanna know if there's any mistakes or if the thing starts to separate. 
because maybe I could do something to fix it, maybe not. But if it's on the bottom, I won't know till it's out and started turning before I know if it's gone bad. So I like to put the seam up. So I just put this one end on the plug here when I push it real firmly. And you can see it kind of suspended just with the one. And then I take the second plug and I stick it in. And I like to kind of pull on the mold here and give it a push. And what that's doing is pushing the tube in and pulling the mold back to kind of load it up with pressure. So that side of this mold here is now pushing the plug in. And you can see how it's suspended. You can pass it around if you want. And now that, that tube is suspended in there. So when I pour clear in there, it's going to go all the way around it, no problem. Any questions on any of that? So you, you'll end up putting that in the pressure pot also? Yeah, so I won't today just because we don't really need to, but I always put these in the pressure pot. Um, at, with that in mind, when you put these in the pressure pot, don't overdo the pressure because remember, you have air inside that tube that you just plugged up. And if you go crazy with the air, you're going to pop a plug out or, you know, something's going to happen to where it, it could mess you up. 30, 40 pounds is more than enough for these. You won't have any bubbles. All right. Yeah. And that's just stuff you'll pick up over time. You, you know, you might overdo it one day on accident and ruin it all, and then you'll Definitely remember not to do that next time. Um, but the whole point is you can do it with any material, paper, anything you want to print. You have to have, depending on the diameter and length of your tubes, you yes. have, to have a different size. Yeah, we have a whole bunch of different ones. This is for the Monarch Sierra, um, which is a real popular one. But yeah, these are all set specifically to the tube. That was a good question. So the question was, do you have to have the template for the size of the tube? Definitely. And they're generally by pen kit name. So if you're making a bolt action, we have a bolt action, one of these, because the, the diameter of the tube and the length are going to be different with every pen kit. That's what I was wondering. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Now these are, I think these are like $2.99, so they're not crazy to have a few laying around. Yeah. So that's the mold. You want to hold that up, Mike? Thanks. So that's the, the tube suspended in the mold. <laughs> I can't see it, so. Thanks for bearing with us on the live. So we have a lot of people that, you know, watch and order around the country that can't be here. So we try to, we try to let everyone see if we can. <laughs> good? Thanks, Mike. <laughs> All right. I'm on import. <laughs> so uh, back to this. If, if it wasn't for the demonstration, we would absolutely put this in the pressure pot. We're just going to go ahead and pour it so you all can see it, and you'll see how the bubbles react. Um, actually, we can put it in this other pot, so we can go ahead and do that. We should be fine. So I'm going to use, for this cast, I'm going to use liquid diamonds. This is an epoxy resin. Uh, I've been using liquid diamond since 2015, so about eight years now. And it's pretty much the only epoxy I use. It's probably the resin I use the most, followed right behind with alumilite. And the reason being is, depending on what I'm doing, I like resin, different resins for different things. Clear casts, I love liquid diamonds. Color drop that we just did, I like alumilite. Um, if I'm doing hybrids, wood and resin, I might do either because they actually both work well. So, and then another factor is time uh, of working time. So most of the time I get about 10 minutes or less with Alumilite. A lot of times it's around six or seven minutes. With this, on a, on a very fast day, we're talking 20 minutes. Right now, probably have 45 minutes because it's much, much slower to start to set. And there again, it's volume related. So if I pour an ounce and a half of this, it's going to be a lot slower than if I pour half a gallon because it's all chemical reaction of the two parts being mixed and generating heat. So if I pour a smaller amount, it's going to take a little longer. So we could have actually poured this before we even started, and it probably still wouldn't be warm yet, you know, in this few minutes that we've been doing this. So what I'm going to do is pour... Actually, here, what, 
let me pour this and then I'll do one other thing. I'm going to pour two ounces of A. Actually, I'm going to pour an ounce and a half of A. Okay. So that's pretty close. I'm 148. Now, something quick to note. This is a two to one. So one ounce of that is half an ounce of this. If you pour more hardener, it'll get harder, right? No. So I, I conducted some tests a while back because I was like, huh, I wonder if it would get harder if I pour more hardener. Mm -hmm. I actually did one to one instead of two to one. And it literally was like a piece of rubber. It was amazing how it was kind of cool, but it was definitely not what I was after. Um, but it did not work how I thought it would. <laughs> Bees tend to get a little crusty on alumilite and this. So you always want to make sure if there's anything crusty, you don't want it to fall into your resin. It'll give you little, little white lines and white chunks. So I did one and a half. So now I'm doing three quarters of an ounce. Perfect. And then I'm going to just mix this. Anyone work with epoxies? So remember how we mix that alumilite really thoroughly? Epoxies are even more important. So if I mix this like this, and I call it good and pour it, it's not going to work right. Epoxies have to be mixed very thoroughly. Usually I say three minutes, which is, sounds crazy when you do it for three minutes. But you'll notice a huge difference. Looks like my cup had a hole in it. You'll notice a huge difference if you mix it short or if you mix it a long time. It just won't set up the same way or near as fast. And it's already kind of slow. Feel that cup. I mean, it's cold. Yeah. So in a minute, we'll so see. So you would be like go to 120 degrees or something like that? No. So it's, since this is clear, I don't have to worry about colors mixing. I can pour it whenever I'm ready, okay. especially because I'm putting it in the pressure pot, which will get rid of the air. Now, if I wasn't going to use a pressure pot, I would want to let it sit in the cup as long as possible to let all the air bubbles rise out and let it heat up as much as I could. Since I'm putting it in a pressure pot, I don't care if it's cold or if it has a lot of air. But, but you would if it had color. I would if it had color in it. I'd wait about, I'd wait till it's about 110 to 120 liquid diamonds. Alumilite, I wait till it's 95, so it's much shorter. And the reason being is alumilite heats up a lot faster. So to go from 95 to setting is much quicker with that than this. So I can wait longer with this because I have more time at the end. Need a paper towel? Yeah. <laughs> right, right there. <clears throat> when you add colors, does it speed up quicker? Um, yes. Some colors will really accelerate the curing setting time. And I always forget which ones it is until I do it. I remember there was an orange mica for some reason that would just like turn stuff like crazy hot. And I was like, whoa. The first time I tried it, I once did one and three of my cups, plastic cups, yeah. melted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yep. Well, I, I use paper a lot. So it's, it's like, it's done. If you want to, like, say, a tint and not to be clear, can you actually do that with the, with the color? Yeah, Make absolutely. Tinted, so. Sure, sure. So you can use just about any dye to tint a color. The question was, can you tint the resin? Um, if you want to tint, let's say you poured this whole cup of resin and you want to tint it like amber, right? You might take the yellow dye, and I mean, not even a drop. A drop will turn it yellow, but you might touch the stick to the top of the nozzle without squeezing anything out, and that little bit that gets on your stick will tint it. Now, the thing is, you can always add more, but you can't take it out, that old story. So ease into it, but it does not take much to tint it. And sometimes it looks really cool, like a blue tint or a yellow tint or whatever. All right. So this is pretty stirred. And you can see, like just on the stick here, there's a lot of bubbles. But I can already feel it start to warm. Remember how cold that was? It's a little mm -hmm. better. Yeah. So it's starting to warm up a little. What I'm going to do is, while that we give that a minute, I brought in another tube, and this is a one of our steampunk style. This is made with uh, different metal foils, and we'll cover that another day. But this is actually a bolt action, 
And this other one is a Sierra Monarch. And this is a Monarch uh, Sierra mold. But I wanted to show you, you can actually use some of these molds for multiple different tubes. So I just put the one plug in. Now I'm going to find a clean plug, put it in the other side. And I just want to make sure I get it in the, in the tube cleanly. And then I'm going to push, and I'm pulling on that mold. So you've got two pretty different tube sizes, a Monarch Sierra and a Bolt Action, that both fit in the same mold. So a lot of times you can kind of do a trial and error and see if they fit before you do all the gluing up. And you might be able to get away with one mold for a couple different things, which is kind of nice. So this is now ready for, we'll pour both of them now. Look at the bubbles that have come to the surface on that. It almost looks foamy. See it? Mm -hmm. So the bubbles are starting to rise. I can actually feel the temp. Not, I'm, It's not hot by any stretch, but I can feel it's not cold anymore. So I like to just give it a little more stir. And then since it is foamy on the top, I'm going to let that sit for a sec while I get this open. All right, no treasures. Sometimes I open molds and I'm like, I forgot I poured that months ago or <laughs> weeks ago. All right. So this one, I do have a two and a half gallon mold rack. However, I can get my hand to the bottom here without, you know, that other one I didn't want to slip or anything. So this one I can no problem just set in here. If I was doing very many of these, boy, it's nice to have a mold rack if you're doing 20 of these things because you cannot stack them in there. Uh, okay. So we got it here on the table. I'm just going to kind of move any bubbles on the surface. Clear my stick off. And then if you can watch here, you'll kind of see it creep around. I typically tend to pour over one end. That way it kind of fills in all the way around. And look at all those bubbles. Have you ever seen so many bubbles? This is why we want to use a pressure pot. I mean, it's it looks like a frothy mess. Now, if we let this sit here on the table for 20 minutes, a lot of those would be gone. They would just kind of evaporate on their own, get to the side. Like, you can see how many come to the surface already. But which ones won't go away are the ones on the bottom. And there's tension in the resin. So those bubbles that are all lining up the bottom part of that tube, they're just going to sit there. They're not going to move unless we make them move. So that's why we're going to do it. So if you can all, you guys see that, okay? There's a lot of bubbles. I'll post pictures of these tomorrow because uh, this I'll let sit in here for about eight hours. But I'll post pictures and it'll be just clear as glass. So that is our tube in. Now that is a real quick general overview of tube in. This is just like mixing colors. Sky is the limit here. You can do so many things. I mean, there's so many things we probably haven't even thought of. Um, but, you know, pictures and company logos and, you know, sports teams, although don't do trademark stuff. Um, you know, it's just endless, endless things. Any questions on that? If you really added heat, would it speed up? It would, but I would never do that. <laughs> just because you're when you add heat to stuff now, obviously if it's real cold, you could, like, set this on a heating pad to, like, and I know some people do that in extreme conditions, but here I wouldn't mess with it because you don't want to you don't want to set it off some weird way. And, you know, I don't know. It, it's tough. We get a lot of questions where somebody's like, hey, my resin won't cure. And I, you know, I'm here standing in the sun and it's 60 degrees and I go, well, what's the conditions like? And they're like, oh, it's minus 20 and snowing. And I'm like, well, <laughs> that's not going to work as well. <laughs> so. It's really dependent on where you're at. It's quite at home, but it's close to zero out here. So. Yeah, that's not Ooh. great. Uh, somebody asked about uh, moisture. So when, whatever compressor you're using for this, you want to make sure you drain the tank a lot. Um, anybody ever drain their compressor tank? Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Oh. Do you? Really? Yeah. Okay. Most people don't even know they have a drain. Yeah, I, um, I got dryers on mine too. Yeah, so do I. So, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's amazing how much water will come out in Arizona out of a compressor. Um, but you want to drain that tank all the time, especially if you're casting a lot. If it's raining and it's really humid out, you may want to skip that day. Because what will happen is you're going to pump 
humid, moist air into your pot, and it's going to react with the resin because resin does not like water. Right. And it'll clear. turn it white. It'll make it cloudy. Um, it'll basically ruin it for the most part. Now, epoxies are a little more forgiving with moisture, but not much. So if it's raining out, I don't cast. It's just, and here, I mean, we don't have a lot of that to worry about. Um, <laughs> this year we have, yeah. But, you know, being indoors in air conditioning is really dry. So that's better than like when I was in our shop and it was humid and hot and uh, created a lot of condensation. But yeah, moisture will affect it. So you don't want your bottles to heat up and cool off and heat up and cool off because you'll get condensation in them and it'll introduce water into the resin. That'll make it go bad. So you have a lot of little variables to pay attention to, and that is one of them is draining a, a tank regularly. And on the tank we use in the other shop, we have a dryer coming out of it. We have a dryer at the nozzle. We got filters all over the place on it, and it really helps. So it's a good thing. Very good. Any questions on anything? It's a fun process. Uh, just one question. Which mm -hmm. uh, of the two products, epoxy and aluminite, which one's more durable? Is Or is there any difference? Yeah, so the question is, is epoxy or aluminite more durable? So aluminite is a urethane base and epoxy is an epoxy base. Um, as far as the main difference to me is is in the working with them, the amount of time I have and the, the cure times and things like that. Once I've got a hard block, I can hardly tell the difference. There's a little bit of a smell difference with epoxy, not a bad smell, but just a little bit different smell. But they both turn on the lathe the same way. They feel the same hardness. And as far as like making handles and stuff, I can't tell a difference. Now, epoxy is more susceptible to heat. So if you have something that you're going to be using in the sun a lot, it might actually soften up if it sat in the direct sun over time. Um, whereas alumilite, I don't see that as much. However, alumilite will turn yellow faster if it's clear and it's in the UV sun. So there are some give and takes with each one. There are resins out there that say they'll never turn yellow because they have UV inhibitors. Well, let me tell you what, they will turn yellow. Guarantee it. They all do. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Um, so really you would choose depending on what you're going to use it for and how much time you need to make what you're making. So if I'm casting a bunch of blanks, I might not want to use epoxy because it takes so much longer. I might want to cycle my pressure pots a couple times a day if I need to make something. If I have epoxy and I'm not in any hurry, it's no big deal to leave it in the pot all day. So really the end result is similar, very similar. They both polish really well. They both turn really well. Um, the only difference would be that sun if you were leaving it out in the sun. The epoxy could soften up a little bit. Well, the reason, reason I asked is I made this coffee mug out of, of, of epoxy. Mm -hmm. I drilled a hole in it and you and turned another piece of epoxy and put that in. Then I turned a wood handle and put that on as a stem. Oh, nice. Well, it worked pretty well until somebody put it in the microwave. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I probably <laughs> melted it. Did it melt? <laughs> Was it a puddle? Uh, well, the handle went. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if epoxy is food safe either. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to check. Don't take it as I don't do I don't anything so food. No. Oh, you know, well, you, I hope I don't die. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see like uh, little cutting boards with rivers and stuff. Well, if you're cutting into that, you're cutting out the epoxy or alumilite or whatever you used. And you're going to be getting little bits of that into whatever you're cutting. So... It's not recommended for anything you cut against or anything you eat or drink out of because I, I don't know if there's, you know, safety there. I'd be cautious. Yeah. They look nice. But they look cool. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And same thing, like when we make um, out of either of these resins, you know, pizza cutters, ice cream scoops, if you want to wash them, that's why we do the, the knurled insert. Mm -hmm. You just take the handle off, put the head in the washer, let the handle sit on the counter because usually it's not dirty or anything. So, yeah, and you can wash it by hand. You just don't want to leave it in a heater. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thanks. Any questions online, Amy, before we go? Nope, and we have like about five-ish minutes before we need to start the rain. All right, you guys are good. <laughs> thanks for coming. Hey, everybody, thanks for coming out real quick. Um, in a couple weeks, the mm -hmm. I think it's the weekend of the 16th, 17th oh, yeah. of February, we're having an open house where we're having some demonstrators 
who are experts in their field come from out of town. So uh, Zach Higgins will be here. He's a big YouTube resin caster. Uh, Curtis Seebeck, who created Cactus Juice, will be here. Um, Jim Hines, who's like a custom cool. pen maker, really well known, will be here. So we're going to have a lot of cool stuff going on. 16th and 17th. 16th and 17th, right, Amy? 17th, 18th. I was close. All right. You're going to be oh, here. Oh, Zach, yeah. A couple weeks? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thanks for coming out, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Hopefully, you learned a little something, I right? learned a lot. <laughs> Probably too much, you know. Yeah. Not... Remember that? Yeah, I remember that. That was fun. That was. That it was still the... looks like honey. I know. It was the night me and uh, Jason were here. So I've been stabilizing blocks for Zach. Oh, that's cool. And he's been making the little uh, blocks for them. Oh yeah. So far, I've cast him like a couple hundred little burls for those. Nice. Yeah. Have you ever used three D blanks, three D printed blanks? Oh, all the time. I just, I, I got to yeah, get a bag of them. So all those three D uh, yeah. prints to cast. I got a gift of a bag of them. It's like you pour certain colors into little each little hole. Or oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and absolutely. I haven't, I haven't used them. I've had them so, for a year. I haven't touched yeah. them. That's cool. Hey, do you want Haley to do the thing or me? Okay, no problem. Lose my voice here. So when are you going to turn some or make some of them blanks for the steampunk? <clears throat>